In this example, we want to find the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in the ellipse. And the equation is given there. Okay, so in this figure, we have our ellipse that's centered at the origin. And you can see that the rectangle is inscribed within this ellipse. Okay. So we're gonna, so in this case, we're gonna assume that the, uh, for our ellipse, we're gonna assume that it has a, um, that the major axis is horizontal, okay? So that would imply uh, for this equation that A is strictly bigger than B, okay? Um, we can also set up this problem to where we have a, where our major axis is vertical, so either way, it, the answer will turn out to be the same, okay? So to do this, okay, we're gonna use optimization, all right? So what we're gonna do here is, okay, we're gonna focus on this part in the first quadrant. Okay, so we're gonna figure out, we're gonna optimize this portion of the rectangle. And then from there we can go ahead and because of the symmetry, we can multiply a result by four, okay, to get the area. Okay, so here, okay, this is on the, this point up here is touching the ellipse. Okay, so this is some point we're going to say this is an XY value, okay? All right, so that's actually going to be our constraint, okay? So the constraint for this problem is that the, the corners of this rectangle are touching the ellipse. All right. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to remember that we want to find the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in this ellipse, okay? So in order to do that, right, we need to first, or we're going to calculate, um, we're going to calculate the area here and the area that you see, the green, sh the green shaded area, okay? Um, so to do that, we have, right, we know that the area, okay, the area of that part is going to be x times y, okay? All right, so in order to, um, it, before we optimize this, okay, we want to uh, make sure, we want to have a function that's in one, in terms of one variable, okay? So we know that for x, right, we have a, we have a y value, okay? So what we can do is we can use this equation, okay, we can use the equation of ellipse to solve for y in terms of x, and then we can substitute back into the, into, we can substitute that back into y, and therefore that will give us an area in terms of x. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, that's the first thing to do is to solve for, to solve for y. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, let's do that here. Okay, let's do that. We can do that down here, or I can do it here. Okay, so this is going to give us, we have y squared over b squared equals to 1 minus x squared over a squared. Okay, and then this will give us y squared equals to uh, we can multiply both sides by b squared. So this will give us y squared equals to b squared times 1 minus x squared over a squared. Okay, and then we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So we're going to get the square root of b squared times 1 minus x squared over a squared. Okay. So we have, uh, we can go ahead and simplify this some more. So we're going to have plus or minus, um, let's see, we can go ahead and take out the b squared from the square root. Okay, so we can take out b. That will leave us with the square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared. And then from there we have plus or minus b. This is the same thing under the square root. This is the same as a squared minus x squared over a squared, okay? 
just using some algebra okay and then that will allow us to take out a 1 over uh, we have 1 over a squared so that will give us let's see okay that will give us b over a times the square root of a squared minus x squared okay so now we have y all in terms of x now okay and a and b remember a and b here are constants okay okay so now okay so that is again so we're used this is we're using this as a constraint okay because the corner point up here in quadrant one it has to be on the ellipse okay all right that's by definition that's what we mean when we have a rectangle that's inscribed in ellipse the corners of that rectangle have to be touching the ellipse okay all right okay so next thing is to okay so let's see all right so this remember this is your right this was the primary equation this is what we want to optimize okay so from there, okay, we can we have that the area now, okay, so I'm gonna let A be the area. And so now this can be expressed in terms of one variable, namely x. So we have x times y, and then y is equal to this expression over here, where we have plus or minus b over a times the square root of a squared minus x squared. So since we're working just in the first quadrant, we we just gonna use we just need the positive value of y okay so we're gonna have x times b over a times the square root of a squared minus x squared okay all right so now okay and I'm gonna go ahead and write it this way so I have b so we have b over a times x times the square root of a squared square root of a squared minus a, x squared. All right, so we're ready to take the derivative now, okay? So we're gonna, we want to optimize this, okay? We want to find the, remember, we want to find the largest rectangle. So we're going to take the derivative of this function, okay, with respect to x, and then set it equal to zero. And then from there, we need to use the first derivative test uh, to see if we uh, indeed have a, um, maximum at that point okay at our critical value okay so the next step is to take the again take the derivative of a with respect to x so a prime of x all right so we're going to use the product rule here okay all right so we have b over a or sorry yeah b over a times x times the derivative with respect to x of the square root of a, a squared minus x squared plus the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay. Times the derivative of b over a x. Okay, so that's applying the product rule. Okay. And then from here, Okay, we're going to get, we can go ahead and take the derivative of this. So the derivative of that, that is the same as a squared minus x squared to the power of one half. Okay, so we can use the power rule along with the chain rule. Okay, so we're going to have one half times a squared minus x squared to the negative one half times the derivative of the of the inside part that's going to give us minus 2x okay, plus square root of a squared minus x squared times the derivative of this okay that's going to give us uh, b over a All right so just to be clear here that was so that was this part here, okay? All right. So we can simplify this uh, before we 
uh, go ahead and solve for the critical point. Okay. Let's see. So, okay, so this is a prime of x. So we can cancel out. Uh, so we have one half times two. That's going to leave us with, that's going to give us a negative one. And then we have uh, x squared. Okay, so this is going to give us uh, minus b. Again, the minus is coming from here, okay, when we, okay, in front of the 2x. So we have minus b over a times x squared times, okay, we have a squared minus x squared to the power of negative one half. So we can rewrite this as one over the square root of a squared minus x squared. So just putting the square root in the denominator. And then we have b over a times the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay. All right, so we can go ahead and set this equal to zero. Okay, so that's the next step. We want to find the critical number. All right. Okay, so what we can do here, okay, so remember we're solving, so basically uh, we're solving this, okay, so we have minus b over a times x squared, one over the square root of a squared minus x squared plus b over a times the square root of a squared minus x squared equals to zero. So what we can do here is we can um, we can clear out the fraction here by multiplying both sides of this equation by um, square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay. Again, this is just an algebraic technique for solving equations. Okay, there's various ways to solve this, but this is the approach that that we'll take here. Okay. All right, so doing this, uh, multiplying everything by square root of a squared minus x squared will give us, okay, over here, it will, that will give us, that will leave us with minus b over a squared plus b over a times a squared minus x squared equals to zero, okay? So this, Square root, uh, you see the yellow in yellow, it's gonna uh, when we distribute, it's gonna give us uh, one for the first term, okay, and that's gonna leave us with minus b over a times x squared. And then over here uh, on the second term, uh, we get square root of a squared minus x squared times the square root of a squared minus x squared. That's gonna leave us with a squared minus x squared, okay. All right, so let's see, okay, so then from here, we can go ahead and factor out a uh, a negative b over a try to simplify things a little more so that's going to leave us with x squared minus a squared so minus of a squared minus x squared equals to zero and then this is going to give us minus b over a this is x squared uh, so if we distribute the negative, we get x squared minus a squared plus x squared. So that's going to leave us with 2x squared minus a squared. All right, so b and a are constant. Okay, so from here, uh, we can solve for x. So that's going to give us 2x squared equals to a squared. And then that's going to leave us with x squared equal to a squared over 2. And that is equivalent to, uh, we can go ahead and take the square root on both sides. And we get plus or minus here. 
and that will leave us with a let's go plus or minus a over square root of 2 so here I don't need to put the absolute value uh, for a because remember that we're working in the first quadrant okay so that tells us that uh, because of that because we're working on this portion of the ellipse on the first quadrant here that means a and b are both positive value okay so this is going to so okay so basically now we have our critical numbers here so next thing is um, we need to find out what we need to find out if we have a, a maximum or minimum here okay so we're going to apply the the next thing is to apply the first derivative test okay All right. Okay, so let's draw our number line. Okay. Since we're dealing with, again, well, since we're working in the first quadrant, then um, we can. We can put we can start from zero here okay and then for the for a critical value okay we can just look at the positive one okay so we have a over root two okay and we also have another uh, there is another critical number here if we go back to our derivative okay which is here okay So that's our derivative. So if you notice, we have square root of a squared minus x squared in the denominator. So that would imply that um, a, if x was a, uh, this term would be uh, we would have zero in the denominator here. So that's where the uh, that's where the derivative is undefined. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot that here. All right. Okay. So so now we just need to figure out what's going on between zero and a over root 2 and between a over root 2 and a okay so to do that uh, we're going to pick a point a test point all right so since again going back up here to our lips we said that a was bigger than b okay so we can use b as one of our test points okay Let's see, just make sure here that A is bigger than B. Okay. So that means we can choose B to be here. Okay. And let's choose. Um, now we can choose here, we can choose root. 2 over 3 times a okay so if we do a check here um, you can see that let's do that up here to show you I want to show you that the square root of 2 thirds a times a is bigger than than a over square root of two, so this is right, so this is square root of two thirds. So let's I'll just show you that here. So we have a over root two. I want to show you that this is going to be less than. Okay, so we have square root of two over square root of three. Okay, since a is positive. Uh, so we can 
immediately cancel the a's out and that will leave us with 1 over root 2 less than root 2 over root 3. And then we can cancel out square root 3 that will leave us with 1 less than square root 2. Okay. And that is uh, definitely true, okay, uh, because square root 2, we get approximately 1.414, okay. All right, so this is a true statement. And, and in fact, if you square both sides, you can get 1 uh, less than 2. Okay, so that is a true statement, okay. All right. All right, so now we can go ahead and let's first, and for B, um, looking at B, we know it's less than A, but you know what? It, we can't tell if it's less than A over root two. So what we can do here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. We can use zero as one of our critical points, okay? So technically it's not a critical number, but we can, I'm sorry, we can use zero as, it's not a critical number, but we can use it as a test point, okay? All right, uh, zero is definitely less than a over root two. So we're gonna use that as our test point, okay? Okay, so I'll just go ahead and make that. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate the uh, derivative at zero first. Okay, so going back up here, all right, so there's our derivative in the yellow box, okay? So if we put in zero for x, okay, we're gonna, for the first part, we're gonna get zero because we have x squared there, okay? All right, and then the second part, we have b over a times the square root of a squared minus x squared. So if we put zero in there, we end up getting b over a times the square root of a squared. So that would just give us a. And so therefore that's gonna give us b, okay? And from there we know that, okay, b, okay, b is greater than zero. Okay, why is that? Because if we go back up here, we can, remember we're working in the first quadrant, okay? And B corresponds to um, the the distance here, okay, for the for the ellipse, okay. So it corresponds to this part, okay. So looking in this just this quadrant, um, it's safe to say that B is uh, for this considering this portion, B is going to be positive, okay. All right. So that's using a little bit of, you know, using some of the properties of ellipse, okay? The next test point is, okay, we have square root of two thirds, okay? Times A. So we're gonna put, we're gonna evaluate the derivative at that point. All right, so, Okay, so we're gonna have b minus a times, okay, so going back up here, so we're putting that, the test point back in for x, okay. So it's gonna get squared, okay, so we're gonna square, okay, so we're gonna take the square root of 2 thirds, that's gonna give us 2 thirds, and then times a squared, and we have one over the square root of a squared. Again, squaring this, uh, squaring this, uh, our, our test point. Okay, we're gonna get two thirds times a squared. And then plus b over a times a squared minus two thirds a squared. Okay. 
All right, so it looks messy, but actually uh, we can we can simplify this. Okay. All right, uh, just checking over everything, make sure all my signs are correct here. All right, so this this is going to give us minus two thirds. times a b okay all over um, so a squared over a that will give us a right and then on the denominator here we have a squared minus two-thirds a squared that's equal to one-third a squared and then we have plus b over a okay um, that's going to leave us again with one third a squared. All right. Let's see if I get everything here. Okay, so from here, um, we can go ahead and So we have, uh, we can go ahead, we, in the denominator we have square root of one third of a squared. All right, so what I can do is, uh, I can, we can make that as our common denominator. Okay, so we're gonna have minus two thirds times a b all over square root of one third base, uh, one square root one third a squared plus uh, b over a times square root of one third times a squared. So we can multiply this by one third a squared and then divide by square root of one third a squared. Okay. And so we have a common denominator. Okay. So this is going to give us minus two thirds a b plus b over a and then that's we have square root of one third a squared times square root one third a squared so that's going to leave us with a one third a squared okay. okay and all this is divided by the square root of one third a squared and we can go ahead and Let's go ahead and just reduce that or simplify that. Uh, that's going to give us uh, 1 over root 3 times a. Okay, so let's see. All right, so we're going to have, right, we have minus 2 thirds a times b plus uh, we have b over a times one third a squared so that's going to leave us with a one third a b divided by one over root three times a okay so in the numerator that's going to give us uh, a negative one third a times b all divided by one over root three times a. So canceling out a, that's going to leave us with, and then we can take the reciprocal right, of one over root three. So that's going to leave us with a root, actually a minus root three over three times b. Okay. And remember that in this case, um, because we're working just with the first quadrant, uh, b is positive. So that means this is a negative value here. All right. So therefore, right, okay, we showed that when we put, when we use zero as a test point on this portion from zero to a over root two, this is increasing. 
and then and then between a over root two and a, okay, this is decreasing. Okay, very nice. So therefore, that, sh that tells us that at when x for for x equals to a over root two, that is a that's going to give us a relative uh, maximum. Okay. So we have a relative maximum occurring at x equals to a over root two. Okay. Okay, so that is the that is the x value that will give us the uh, the maximum, the largest rectangle inscribed in an ellipse. Okay. All right. So now we need to figure out why. Okay. And to do that, we can go back to uh, we solved for y from here. Okay. So we can use this equation. Okay. So we have that x is okay. So our x value was a over root two. Okay. So we can substitute in here for to get y value. Okay. So let's do that down here. Um, actually, I can do it here. Okay, so we have so we have that x was equal to I forgot what it was x was equal to a over root two. Okay. All right, so we can go ahead and figure out the y component. We can just plug it into into this expression here. Okay. So we have y equals to, um, remember that b and a, we're in the first quadrant, so b and a are positive, times the square root of a squared minus, okay, we take the square of this, uh, right, of a over root two, so that's gonna leave us with a squared over two, okay. And so this is gonna give us b over a times, so we have, uh, a squared minus a squared over 2, so that's the same as 2a squared minus a squared all over 2. Okay, so we have, uh, so we're going to end up getting square root of a squared over 2. Okay, so we can take out, we have a squared. So we can take that outside the uh, square root. So we're going to end up getting a times b over a times 1 over root 2. From here, a's cancel out, so we so we get so we're left with b over root 2. Okay. So that is that is the y value. Okay. So we found okay. All right, so we found our values. Okay, so it, okay, so let's see. So x is a over root two, and y is b over root two. Okay, so now we can go ahead, and that will give us the area. Okay, so if we multiply these, then we end up getting the area uh, for this part, okay? So I'm gonna do that down here. So since, it, since x equals a over root two and y is equal to b over root 2. Okay. 
So therefore the area for that, okay, so the, okay, so that's giving this, so the area for that portion, okay, so the, so one fourth of the area of that rectangle, okay, so again, we're, we look at this portion and then we're going to multiply by four, okay. So we have one fourth of the area is going to be equal to a over root two times b over root two. So we're going to get a times b over two. So therefore, our area right, is going to be equal to four times a b. Okay over 2 and that will leave us with 2 times a b okay. that is our solution okay so that is the um, that is the maximum area of the rectangle in this case for the inscribed rectangle uh, given this ellipse okay it's a lot of work uh, but it's it's just um, most of it's just algebra okay the, the only calculus part here was taking the derivative okay and then using the first derivative test okay all right so it's a very nice problem with the optimization